Hey there, in this video, we'll be learning about animation curves in Game Maker Studio 2.3. Animation curves are a new asset type that basically allow you to create curves. These curves can be used in GML, so you can use them in your code for any purpose, and they can also be used and created within sequences. So smooth animations in sequences can be achieved using animation curves. Now in this video, we'll be looking at the animation curve editor and we'll be using some curves with GML to create some animations. We are gonna look into how curves can be used for moving an object or a sprite. And later, we are also gonna use curves for interpolation. So you can see the way this health bar is animating. This sort of animation is happening because of this animation curve. So we'll be covering that in this video. And then in the next video, we're gonna look at using animation curves in sequences. Here are the timestamps for all the different sections in this video. So let's begin with the first one. In the new asset browser, you can see a folder for animation curves. And if you go into this menu here, you can create an animation curve. So I'll create one, and it'll appear in the group that I had selected. I'm gonna go into the workspace now, and here we see the animation curve editor. Here we have the name of the asset. Then here we have the main view where the curve can be edited. And finally here we have a list of all the curve channels. So one animation curve can actually have multiple channels and we are gonna learn more about this later in the video. Right now we have one channel which we can edit here. Now horizontally the curve goes from 0 to 1. And by default we have two points, one at 0 and the other at 1. So we can move these points wherever we want within the view and this modifies their vertical positions or their values. Now if you go into the channels list here, we can click here to see a list of all the points in this curve. So here we have our two points. Here you can see their horizontal positions, which are 0 and 1. And here you can see their values. So the value for the first point is 1, and for the second point it's minus 1. You can see in the curve how the first point is at 1, and the second one is at minus 1. So this is our vertical range, and we can change it, which we are gonna do pretty soon. But right now I'm gonna create some more points in this curve. You can do that by clicking anywhere on the line. So now we have a new point, which I'm gonna place here. Then I'm gonna create another one. And now we have a basic curve with four points. The two new points that we just added can be seen in the list here. And their values can be seen here. Now you can actually modify these values by changing the numbers here. So I can set this to 1, and the point will move there. And then I can set this to minus 1, and that point will move there. And of course you can also change their horizontal positions. So I'm gonna do that, and you'll see the effect in the curve. So this is basically how dimensions work within the curve editor. I'm now gonna modify the curve a little, and we're gonna make it smooth. So we can do that by going here, and clicking on smooth. And now we have a nice and smooth curve. You can move the points or create new ones, and the curve will always be smooth. Now as I said earlier, our vertical range in this view is from 1 to minus 1. So we can simply modify this by zooming in or zooming out. So you can see how the range has now gone up to 2.14 and minus 2.14. So you can now zoom out further or zoom back in. But if you want to set the range manually, you can go here. So here you can change the upper value and the lower value. Let's say you're working with larger values, so you can set this to something like 80 and minus 80. And you can set the range to be from 0 to 1 if you're working with interpolation. Now we're gonna learn about the GML functions that allow you to work with animation curves. So in this room, I have these three instances, and they are instances of the orb layer object. We'll be applying an animation curve to the positions of these instances. So we're gonna start by creating a new animation curve. I'm simply gonna name this anim curve player. And now we're gonna go into the animation curve editor that has opened. We have our default channel here, which is called curve one. We can rename it by right clicking on it and selecting rename, and I'm simply gonna name it X. So we're gonna apply this channel to the X axis of our player. But the name can really be anything. It doesn't have to be X. This is simply what I chose. Now I'm gonna come here and set the vertical range to 40 and minus 40. And then I'm gonna create a basic curve that goes up and down. We also wanna make it smooth, so I'll do that by going here and clicking on smooth. 
and now our curve is done. We are now gonna read this curve when the game is running using GML functions. So I'll go into the O player object. Now here we are gonna add the create event. We are simply gonna be setting up some variables in this event. First of all we need a variable to store the animation curve asset that we are gonna be using. Then we need a variable for our position on that curve. And finally a variable for the speed of the animation. So our curve asset is the anim curve player asset. Now the position of the curve is the horizontal value from where we are reading the vertical value. So it goes from 0 to 1 from the start of the curve to the end of the curve. Of course we start with the curve position at 0 and then we keep adding to it to move it to the right. Now the value that is added to the curve position every step is the curve speed. So now from this position in the curve, we can read the vertical value and basically do anything with it. And we're gonna do that in the step event. So we're gonna add that event and here we're gonna handle our animation. But before adding any code, I'm briefly gonna explain what we are about to do. So we have a curve asset which is simply an animation curve. Now from the curve asset, we need to get the curve struct. So once we have the curve struct, from that we need to get a channel. And once we have the channel, we can get the value from any point in that channel. So I'm now gonna add the code for all this inside the step event. Now on this line, we are getting the struct from our animation curve asset. The struct has all the information about the animation curve. So you can middle click on the function and read this page to know more about the struct. Now on the next line we are getting a channel from our curve struct. So for that we are using this function. Now the first argument here is the curve struct. And the second argument is the name of our channel. In the animation curve we set the name of the channel to x. So that is what we are entering here. But you can also just enter the number of the channel. So if you enter 0 here, that would also work. Now we have the channel in this variable. So we can read the value at any horizontal position on this curve. So we can do that using the anim curve channel evaluate function. In the first argument, we pass in the channel. And in the second argument, we pass in the horizontal position, which should be between 0 and 1. So that's our curve position variable. Now this function is gonna give us the vertical value at this horizontal position in the curve. So we'll get the value in this variable and now we can do anything with it. Now on this line we are setting the x of the instance. We are setting it to the x start plus the value from the curve. So the instance will simply move around the x position where it was created. If you run the game now you won't see any movement. This is happening because our curve position is always at 0. So on the curve, it always stays here. We want it to move forward, so back in the step event, we are gonna add to it. I'll do that before our code here. So now we are simply adding the curve speed to the curve position. If you run the game now, you'll see the animation, but only once. So here we are adding to our curve position. It's gonna go from 0 to 1 and then it's gonna go even higher. But the curve simply wants a value between 0 and 1. So if we want the animation to loop, we should reset the curve position to 0 once it reaches 1. We can simply do that with the mod operator. This way when the curve position reaches 1, it's gonna come back to 0. I'm gonna run the game again, and now we see the animation playing properly. So the instances are moving based on our curve. Now we're gonna add another channel to this curve. This one will be for the y axis. So I'll click on add curve and we'll get a new curve. You can see it here in the curve editor. I'm gonna rename it to y. Now we can also change the color of the curve by right clicking and selecting edit color. I'm gonna make it yellow. Now you can see here that this channel already has four points. You can see all of the points here. So basically all channels in the curve must have the same number of points. So if you add or remove any points from the X channel, it's also gonna affect the Y channel. Now these connected points are also gonna have the same horizontal values. 
So when I move this point, it also moves the same point in the previous channel. But of course this connection is only for the horizontal value. The vertical value on the other hand can be set to anything. And this way for example we can make a curve that looks like this. And this way you can see how the difference between two channels is only the vertical values. Other than that the number of points and their horizontal values will be the same. Now we're gonna go back into O player and here we're gonna apply the Y channel of our curve. So for that I'm simply gonna copy this code and paste it here. And in the new code I'll simply replace X with Y. So now on this line we are getting the Y channel from the curve. Then we are reading the vertical value from the same curve position. And then we are applying that to the Y, adding the value to Y start. Now on this line we are getting the curve struct, but we don't have to do this since we are already getting it up here. So this line can be removed. So if we run the game now, we are gonna see that the instances are animating on the X axis and the Y axis. I'm gonna modify the Y channel of the curve so that it looks like this. And now the instances are moving in a circle. So this part demonstrates how animation curves can be used inside your game with GML. So what I apply to the X axis and the Y axis can be applied to the image angle or the image alpha or something else for a different kind of effect. Now we're gonna be doing interpolation with animation curves. We can apply the interpolation to a health bar. So I'm gonna go into the animation curves folder and I'm gonna create a new animation curve. I'll name this anim curve health bar. Now in the curve editor, first of all, I'm gonna set the range to be from 0 to 1. And now we can create a curve for interpolation. This is basically how a value reaches its target from 0 to 1. So this would be the starting point and this would be the ending point. What you see here right now is linear interpolation. So the value goes from 0 to 1 with a constant speed. Now I'm gonna place a point here and then I'm gonna make the curve smooth. So we're gonna use this curve for interpolating our health bar. But first we need to make the health bar. So I'll go into the objects group and here I'll create a new object. I'll name this O health bar. Now in the object I'm gonna add the create event. Here we're gonna be creating some variables so I'm gonna add this. First of all here we have the width and the height of the health bar. Then here we have the fill value of the health bar. So this will be a value between 0 and 1 where the health bar is empty at 0 and completely filled at 1. So this is the value that we'll be interpolating. Then here we have the target for that fill value. So this is where the fill value will go. And here we have the start value for the fill animation. So whenever we start the fill animation with the animation curve, this will store where that animation started. Now here we are getting the curve struct from our new animation curve. And then from that struct, we are getting the first channel. So in the function here, we are simply specifying 0 instead of the channel name. Now here we have our position on the curve. So this goes from 0 to 1 on the horizontal axis of the curve. And then finally we have the speed at which we are gonna go through the curve. So if you wanna speed up or slow down the interpolation, then this is the variable you need to modify. Now we are gonna add the step event. Here I am gonna add a single line of code for now. Here I am setting the HP fill value. It will simply be equal to the mouse x divided by the room width. So this will be a value between 0 and 1 depending on the x position of the mouse inside the room. And that will be applied to the health bar's fill value. This code is only temporary and we are gonna replace it soon. Now we are gonna add the draw event for drawing the health bar. So in the event I'll add this. Now in this part we are drawing the back of the health bar. So here we set the draw color to maroon and then we draw a rectangle for the health bar. And here we reset the color back to white. Now in this part we are drawing the fill of the health bar. So for this I set the color to orange and then draw another rectangle. Now the width of the rectangle here is multiplied with the HP fill value. So the health bar will be completely filled only when HP fill is 1. And then again here we are resetting the color. 
and here in the last part we are simply drawing the HP fill and the HP fill target so that we can see their values. And that's all for the draw event. I'm now gonna go into the room and place a health bar instance here. I'll also remove these three instances. And now I'll run the game. We see the health bar here and its fill value depends on the X position of the mouse. And now we're gonna implement the interpolation. So we're gonna go back into the health bar object and open the step event. Here I'm gonna remove this line and instead add this. Now in this part we are simply setting the HP fill target. So that happens when we press space. If the HP fill target is 0, we're gonna set it to 1, otherwise we're gonna set it to 0. Now when we do that, we're also gonna reset the curve position to 0. This will take us back to the beginning of the animation curve. And then we're also gonna set the HP fill start value. This stores where the animation started, so we are setting it to the current HP fill value. Now this is the part where we are handling the interpolation. So first we are making sure that the curve position is smaller than or equal to 1. So in that case we come to this line where we are getting the vertical value from this curve channel at this horizontal curve position. So now we have the value and we can use it for our interpolation. That is handled by these two lines. In the first line we are getting the difference between the fill target and the fill start. So this is how much the fill value is changing. Then on the next line, we are setting the HP fill variable. Here we are multiplying the difference with the value from the animation curve and we are adding that to the fill start value. So this will be the interpolated HP fill value. Now on the last line here, we are simply adding the curve speed to the curve position. And with this, our interpolation is done. Now I'll run the game. Whenever I press space, the health bar toggles between filled and empty. Of course, now the animation of the filled part is based on the animation curve. So we can now go back and edit our curve. For example, I'm gonna give the health bar a springy animation simply by modifying this curve. And now I'll run the game. And you can see now that the health bar has a more springy animation. And so you can modify the curve in any way you want to get a different kind of movement. On this page you can see many different types of interpolations. So you can somewhat replicate them with animation curves. The link to this page will be in the description. And that's it for the video. Check out my other videos on 2.3 in this playlist and my other game maker tutorials in this one. I will be making more videos so make sure to subscribe here and I'll see you in the next one.